Well, good afternoon, financial professionals. Dan Peterson here, president at E4 Insurance Services, and I'm glad to welcome you to The Brew, where we build relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. And for those of you joining The Brew for the first time, welcome. On today's Brew, we welcome back E4's Insurance Services' newest addition, Brady Serold, who's our C Senior Vice President of Disability Insurance, for the second of our three-part series on the topic of disability insurance. Brady will be sharing with the attendees how to engage with clients in the disability insurance planning, as well as how to go about attaining a DI quote. Feel free to use the chat box and to share your thoughts or ask questions. Also, the attendees are all in a drawing for a CE voucher and a Starbucks gift card, and we'll be announcing the winner at the end. Thank you for tuning in. So, Brady, we've been busy since last week, a lot of quoting, got some cases working, uh, advisors are engaging, uh, but we thought we'd start today with disability insurance, disability income. Why? Why is it important? You know, again, I think that's the, the biggest piece in the why is, you know, every client you have needs a plan if they get sick or hurt and can't work. I mean, it's not about disability. You take that word out of your you know, vernacular uh, because really it's a plan if you get sick or hurt and can't work. I mean, that's really what we're here. Um, as I say, it may or may, not, may or may not involve insurance, but it involves asking that simple question. What's your plan if you get sick or hurt and can't work? And as an advisor, you know, again, you're not, you know, trying to sell them insurance at that point. What you're trying to do is make sure that if something's wrong, you know, when their money's coming, where it's coming from, and how much. And that's, you know, really what, as an advisor, what we should be doing, whether you're, you know, planning in the event of a early death, um, you know, a, a disability, a long-term care event, or when you retire. Again, where's your money going to come from until you die? I mean, again, you might not have any issues, but you still need need that cash flow. So that's the important thing. I think a lot of advisors don't talk about it because um, one, they're not comfortable talking about something that they don't know a lot about, uh, and that's why we're here to help them. But uh, secondly, I think a lot of advisors have tried it once and didn't have a favorable experience and said, "I'm never going to talk about it again." So I think both of those things um, with doing the process the right way, which in the next present, next uh, series, we'll talk about a little bit. So, so this, the, is the really, this is really an extension of, the, of what good financial planning should be all about, which, which is a plan. What is the plan if, you're, if your client is sick or hurt and cannot work? What would the plan be? Where's the income going to come from? How, how are they going to to handle that. And that it really comes down to your saying, asking simple questions. Good, correct. Again, it really, you look at every financial plan is predicated on one thing, funding it to completion, right? Without, I mean, you can devise the best financial plan for a client if they're 40 years old saying you're gonna work another 25 years, but if something happens to them in year four of that 25 year plan, it doesn't perform the way you want it to. And that's where, you know, whether it's the, the incidents that happen during life from a protection standpoint, you have to protect the cash flow. So you, we've talked a little bit about the why. How? What's the how? How how does an advisor have that conversation? Again, I think that's the part where we go back to, you know, every client, in, in my personal opinion, has five basic needs. And that doesn't change if you make $30,000 a year or $300,000 a year. You know, the, the zeros behind your needs might be a little bit different, but you know, everyone has to have a place to live. Everyone has to eat. Everyone has to pay their utilities. Everyone has to have transportation and everyone has to have insurance. And, you know, you'd ask people, you know, what their most valuable thing they have to, to pay for at time, they'll, they'll probably say their home, which for most people is probably their biggest expense. But insurance can also be their big, biggest expense because probably the most expensive insurance is your health insurance. And if you're an employee of a company and you become disabled, your employer doesn't pay your health insurance anymore. You know, once you can go on COBRA, but it's it's not 
inexpensive or you can go onto the government plan sure. as well. Then if you have certain medical conditions, now you might not be seeing the same doctors that you've seen before because they're not approved. So insurance is a big part. And then of course there's lifestyle. People have nice things. I mean, they have boats and motorcycles and razor, you know, quads. And I mean, they go on trips, they have vacation homes. I mean, there's a lot of things that people have you know, that tr contribute to lifestyle, you know, kids and cup soccer, you name it. And there's a lot of things in lifestyle that people have. And, you know, those are the additional expenses. But I think finding as an advisor, what their five basic needs are is, is critical because everybody has a, has different needs. And what our job is, is to make sure at least those needs and whatever things in lifestyle um, they would like covered. So what are the common things you hear most people say their plan would be? Uh, where would they get this income, these funds, if they were too sick or hurt and not able to work? Well, I think, you know, the, the biggest part is you'd have savings, investments, 401k, we can sell some stuff, um, you know, oh, I'm, I'll change my lifestyle, you know, oh, social security, that's, that's one, um, or, you know, my, my employer has something, I think, you know, those are probably the most common ones, and, and if, if, if somebody has, says their employer has something, they, you don't know what they have, again, about 35% of all employers, you know, go big, you know, all from small companies to big companies have any, some form of long-term disability, 35%. So if you have one of those in your companies, you better understand how it works. So Brady, how, I, I know I've heard you assist advisors on this. So when we're sitting, if, if our client has, they're one of the 35% that is fortunate enough to have an employer providing a long-term disability or group long-term disability plan, the, the client may not really know what they have, how, what do you need to be able to provide an analysis for, for that advisor and his client or her client? Yeah, and, and you're right, Dan. Most people don't know what they have because when you sign up for benefits with an employer, I mean, you, you're looking at things that you have to pay for. So looking at the value of it. So that's, that's kind of the, the biggest piece. But um, you, know, you don't have to be an expert. That's what we're here for. We can get a copy of their summary plan document. It's a PDF now that they'll send to you. The all they have to do is ask for an eight from HR. It's like a 60 page document that talks about how their plan works. And what we take a look at is, you know, what is their definition of covered earnings? Because most group plans don't cover incentive compensation, whether that's bonuses or commissions. Um, group plans, if it's employer paid, it's taxable. Uh, there's benefit maximum. So in typically $5,000, $7,500, $10,000 a month. So, you know, there's caps for your top earners. Um, you know, and then there's the different definitions within the contract. So there's a lot of pieces, but what we try to do is when I put it together, I try to really put it in five or six bullet points and, and, and make it match what that client situation is. So from an advisor standpoint, you can look at it and say, okay, you know, you thought you had $10,000 a month of coverage, but because you have incentive compensation that's not covered and it's taxable, you only have $4,000 a month. Again, all you're doing is putting their numbers in front of them and then they'll say, well, my expenses are seven and I only have four. Right. Got a problem. Right. So, so you can really, that advisor who may not be versed at all of the things that you said, the definition of the, of what income is covered, that the, uh, all of the, 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 the definitions of disability, what, how it's, how it's paid for, everything else, what the benefit is. They may not be versed in that, but your experience, both as someone who's been a, an underwriter, written contracts, reviewed contracts for 25 plus years, plus been in, uh, sat across from clients, uh, you can, you, you're here to assist them. Is that, is that right? Correct. Correct. I mean, we, we want them, you know, to educate. I mean, cause I think that's the biggest part. If you, you know, you make the advisor comfortable in what they're presenting. And as I've seen, I haven't talked anything about product here. I have nothing about product because until you determine that there's a need and, you know, what that need is and more so what their budget is, product doesn't make a difference. You know, what we're trying to find out is, do they have a problem or not? Because if you show them an illustration that's the maximum benefit and, you know, the first place somebody's going to look is the cost. And if, 
you, they look right at the cost and you haven't even determined what their need is yet, you've lost them. So we want to go, go backwards and find out, hey, you know, what, did, what, are, what are your needs? I mean, what does your monthly expenses look like? And then where's the money coming from? And as an advisor, that's where we can help them with the group plan if they have one. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you have a 401k, I mean, not the best source, is it, Dan, to take money out when you're, yeah. when you're young? Take pre-tax dollars out and pay tax on them unless you're a hardship. But uh, yeah, that's that's not the best plan. Yeah. And, uh, and most people, you know, have what, save 15, 20% of their income each year, right? Most well, of the clients are saving 15 or 20. I think America has a little bit more of a savings problem than that. Uh, <laughs> you're probably right there. Um, you, know. you know, one of the things, so so you're here to help uh, really identify, okay, what do they have when it comes to their group long-term disability benefits or even a personal long-term care policy or long-term disability policy. But a lot of people have this uh, understanding that Social Security is going to be there for them. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Social Security and the, the disability yeah. benefit there? Hey, again, Social Security, I say if you are disabled and collect Social Security, it, you, enough money is not there for you. I mean, that's like, you know, an extra layer. Um, because again, the definition of Social Security disability is you cannot do work and engage in substantial activity because of your medical condition. Any substantial activity. That's pretty uh, pretty broad, especially if you're a, a doctor or a, you know, a pharmacist or an engineer or somebody who's spent extra years getting a trade, whether an electrician or a plumber. Now you're saying any gainful occupation? So, so you're, you're, you're saying if I could be a greeter at Walmart, yep. I may Again, not we, qualify for Social Security disability. Well, there was we worked with a client uh, when I was back in Pennsylvania and there was a fight for social security and the um the attorneys told them had had him hold up his hand like this and had a stop sign so he could be a crossing guard and said there's something you can do wow so, so that's not really the best plan uh no and and, and then, then it, it and there's a 180 day elimination period again the at, it takes three to eight months for the initial application, another three to four months once the decision's made if it's not approved, and then it can be anywhere from six months to two years after that if you appeal. So again, now you're talking about somebody who has a severe medical condition, and now they're having to fight the process to get the money. That's why you see all those disability attorneys on TV, because the process is undaunting. And now you're talking about people who you know, may not have the skills to to battle it, or they're not in the in the best medical shape to handle that sort of stress and you know from it. So you know, again, and, and then the other part is you know the average disability benefit paid out was thirteen fifty eight a month. That's the average benefit. That's so one thousand three hundred and fifty eight dollars a month. Okay, and it's taxable. That is not uh, going to help most people maintain their 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 home and lifestyle and their definitely family not. activities definitely not well if we so so you're here to help the advisor number one understand what the client has what the plan would be when when the asking better questions providing bullet point information back that shows what they have so it's understandable and uh, that they can coach their client then at that point uh People insure all kinds of things. Uh, why would they want to purchase a disability income plan? Well, again, I, I think it goes back to starting with just having a plan and understanding and where your money is coming from. I mean, you look at some of the things we buy insurance on. I mean, I think, you know, when I bought my daughter a new iPhone for her birthday recently, I mean, they were wanting to charge you 20 bucks a month to insure her cell phone. In case she breaks it, I'm like, the thing's worth fourteen hundred dollars, and I'm gonna pay twenty dollars a month. You know, I mean, you insure your cars, your house. I mean, a lot of other things, but the true value is, you know, your ability to to earn a living. I mean, that's your most important asset. I know you, Dan. You said it, and you uh, said, hey, if you had a four million dollar machine in your garage, would you insure it? Well, yeah. I mean, I insure my thirty thousand dollar car. <laughs> 
it's in the garage. Why wouldn't I steer a $4 million machine? Well, you are that machine. Or one that spits out $150,000 every year. Yeah, would, I certainly would be thinking of insuring that. Um, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> well, one of the things in engaging with you that sometimes advisors really struggle with is even the, if, you know, how do they illustrate uh, what's available to the client? So after they've ha had a plan, they've talked with you about, what the plan would be, where there's shortfalls, all of that. What's the next step in that process? Yep, and I'm going to share my screen here quick and uh, bring that up. Is the PowerPoint up? I see a DI quote request form. That is correct. We get to. There we go. Is that on there? It's on there. Perfect. You know, I had a little technical issues this morning, so sometimes I don't trust uh, moving the multiple screens, and maybe it's user error. Well, that's probably what it is. At least that's what my kids say. So we've developed a quote request form. It's pretty simple. Um, again, what you really want is predictable outcomes. Um, again, you can obtain a quote from anybody, um, but you know, it's not any good until the application comes in. And if you get frustrated with the process, it's because typically the, the intake wasn't as good. Um, so again, obtaining, obtaining the details, you know, specific job duties, pre-screened for health conditions. And we're going to go over a little bit of that in the next presentation, you know, next week about that, um, you know, the importance of pre-screening, um, you know, other coverage, details, self-employment information. So we've put this um, quote request form it's fillable on our site and you can send it to quotes and again that's what you know allows me to at least make the best recommendation i may have a few other questions sometimes you know if there's not enough information there uh, but you'd be amazed at what's out on google right now um, you can send that completed quote request form to quotes at e4.insurance or you know pick up the phone and call me or email me or your rvp you know if there's something you want to discuss and you know, maybe it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I say, you know, underwriters are like kindergartners. And I've said this to our group before. And, you know, if you give them a blank piece of paper, you have the kindergartner draw a picture, you'd be surprised the type of pictures the kindergartners can, can draw. I said, but if you give an underwriter, you know, 100, you know, color by number, and you get 95 of them, it's can pretty much look like your client. And that's what we want to do. We want to lead it right put it out there so that when the case comes back, it looks like what we quoted and what you talked to your client about. Excellent. Now, you don't just consult. This would be, you know, look like more for an individual. What happens if someone's working with a corporation like you've assisted me recently, uh, doing some buy sell planning uh, for a third generation of ownership uh, it's real easy to define the value of the company and life insurance but uh, one of the things you did was review the buy sell agreement and specifically you pulled out the disability clause and the question that i'll never forget that you asked me was where's the money going to come if they have to if they have to do a b and c which the disability clause said um, it, how do we how do we get you involved in in things like that? Yeah, and no, that's the part. Sometimes when I when I see opportunities, I'm looking at certain quotes, um, you know, sometimes you might come back and you know, let's just say it's the CEO of a hospital, and they're coming in and asking for individual coverage on top of their group. Well, is there an opportunity to get more than one? Because if the CEO has a problem, the CFO probably has a problem, the controller probably has a problem. Um, Again, and you're probably not talking about people who are 30 years old and never been to the doctor. You're talking about 40, 50 year olds who have health history. And you know, again, if we can skip the underwriting, maybe that's the form for guarantee issue. Um, you know, and in your case, Daniel, it's, it's taking a look. Hey, here's what we're working on, and you know, let me take a look at the buy sell agreement. How does it set? What's the wording in it? Because again, an attorney can write about anything you want them to, but is it the true intention of the client? And then, as you said, you know, what are the triggers? And where's, where's the money, the money gonna, gonna come money, from? And where's the money gonna come from? I mean, right. it can also lead to, you know, we just worked with a client, you know, self-employed and 
you know, personal income protection. And then I said, well, do you have a location? Yeah. You know, I, I have a shop and maintenance shop and, you know, well, do you have a lease on that? Well, yeah, I have a 10 year lease. Like, okay. So if something happens to you, are you out of the lease? No. Do you still have to pay your insurance? Yeah. So that led to an, an overhead expense discussion. So there's a lot of things, you know, we can, we can go and, and one of the pieces um, for our uh, savvy advisors coming up, um, I'm going to talk about that, how, how, D, how to integrate DI uh, into business planning. So that's one of the things, you know, I think the opportunities we were talking, Dan, that's a good segue to you know, talk about. Yeah, the Savvy advisor. advisor Solution, uh, sort of a sort of success that we have coming up September 28th in uh, at the at the Air, Air Museum in Fargo, North Dakota. So we're looking forward to having you present there. That's going to be awesome. Uh, why E4, Brady? At the end of the day, what what is it that I, obviously you're very personable and you have a lot of experience, but why should someone consider disability planning, income planning with E4? Again, the reason you brought me over, Dan, is to create a consistent experience, consistent positive experience for the advisor. I think we were doing that in a lot of the other areas. And now here, that's what I'm trying to help create the RVPs and our, and our office team uh, to do that. And, my experience of being in the home office, whether it's been underwriting or territory management, being the executive benefit consulting world, or even being sitting across from clients. I mean, I, I thought it was easy. You know, I went out when I was about 40 and said, well, I'm just going to go be an advisor on the first sale. I was horrible. I knew everything about product, but I was horrible because I hadn't had that conversation. But again, now I understand, you know, from the other side and putting the right pieces together and and working and assisting advisors. I think that's that's the key part is, you know, choose your own adventure. You know, we can provide you information. We can lock along the way with you. You know, and if you're not comfortable at all, I mean, we're licensed and appointed and can can assist in the full presentation to the client. That's great. That's super. Well, it, it is, uh, it's refreshing. I, we see the activity, Brady, every every day now. Uh, more and more conversations are being had. More and more advisors are, are asking that question, what's the plan? Not, do you have disability? Do you have this? What's the plan if you become too, too sick or hurt to be able to work? And uh, that's really making it a much better conversation than uh, all of the bells and whistles and features that that we get into that that really take away from that basic question. So thank you. And I know next week, we're going to have uh, you back on for our third part of our series. Um, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, Brady, we're going to wrap up. And next week, I look forward to you sharing with, with Honor Brew the third and final part of our three-part series. And you'll return to discuss the importance of pre-screening case design, and our product and carrier lineup. So look forward to that, especially the pre-screening part of that. Uh, you know, we never think about people's jobs and how that can affect disability as well and what's available for them. Well, everyone, uh, another great time on The Brew. We'll see you next week and look forward to your participation on The Brew, building relationships every week. Take care.